has to be one. Hello. We don't want to miss this gold. No, 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 no. We we needed. We we're gonna. We're not gonna have Alex peeing in the podcast. No. Although, um, speaking of over COVID, I recurrently would like just leave headphones in and go pee, and then people could like hear that every time. Sure. Yeah. I, I only found out like a year later. That'll happen. I thought I was secretly peeing. I think I did that once on a <laughs> Twitch stream. You did? So that's, I mean, theoretically, even more people heard that. Oh, yeah. Instead of just the little homies. I should probably plug that in, huh? <laughs> I guess so. I don't know. We'll have to lose this sweet peeing tangent we got in here. That's going to be hard for us. That's going to be okay. tough. I'm going to I'm gonna plug it in, though. That's probably okay. the best. All right. Now we're actually good to go. Okay. Cool. Hussein, thank you so much for being here. Do you have any questions? No, thank before? you for having me on. It's a pleasure to have you. Uh, do you have any questions before we start the grand show? Well, just can you well can you just like walk me through how it's going to work? Only because I've never like I've listened to the show, but I've never like been on it. So yeah, yeah. Is there anything yeah. that I need to like Truly do or no. keep an eye on or? The structure of it really can um, be dynamic in a way that maybe is hard for outsiders to really get the, <laughs> the full handle on. But what's going to happen here is uh, I'm going to hit the button and we're going to dance. Yeah. Okay. All right. And then it's one of those types of shows, huh? It's certainly one of those kinds of shows. If it, I don't even know if it's anything else. Um, yeah. And then after that, I'm going to ask if you've been on Quora. And then we're going to read you Quora's for an hour. Yeah. Great. Okay, cool. That sounds good. That sounds like a very innovative torture technique uh, that they would use in a prison somewhere. And I would enjoy it, actually. If anything, it would make me um, want to be tortured more. I'm a traitor to the regime. Is that okay? (laughs) (laughs) Or something like that. Let's get into it right now. Let's Let's hit it. it. We're back at Quarry Raiders another week. Can you believe it? Fresh after lunch. Ooh, who's those sleepy boys on the mic? The weekly show returns. That's right. For another one. Is it weird that it's after lunch for us, but likely the break of dawn for you? That's right. Right it's in. in the morning. It's Alex and Jeremy. It's the Quora Raiders <laughs> podcast, the only show about Quora. Uh, we got a great show for you this week. As pushing boundaries is the name of the game, then you'll love what we're here to say. Uh, and it that is so close. <laughs> <laughs> you had it. Whatever. <laughs> Fuck it. Uh, we, we got a great show for you today with uh, all kinds of Quora's on it. And all the way from across the pond, just a hop and a skip down the road, we have Hussein Kasani from the Trash Future Podcast. Hussein? Thank you for having me on. I uh, I'm I'm excited to uh, to to listen to some core, to listen to some chorus being read to me, which I think is a very innovative. Uh, yeah, it's a very innovative way to uh, to engage with that medium. Yes, I don't know if we emphasized this when we were talking before the show started, but you will have to listen to them. Yeah, you have to sit your ass mm. down. You're gonna have I to am. think. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna practice my listening skills, uh, and I'm going to listen. I'm going to learn. And I'm going to show empathy. Uh, I'm excited. I'm excited to like use this hour to deconstruct my toxic masculinity uh, by interacting with chorus. Yes, and you're somewhat of an a- expert on the field here because you have a podcast, uh, another podcast called Ten Thousand Posts, where you and I've been on it promoting this show, but you. You look at up to ten thousands of posts every <laughs> we week. We do look at, well, yeah, we do look at a lot of posts. I don't know if know if we actually what because I guess it depends on whether you kind of classify a quora as a post. I do, yeah. but obviously, like you know, it varies between people to people. Um, but you guys are probably read. You you guys are probably close to the ten thousand post mark than we are. Right. Um, so planning this one, we were looking at it, and we were like, because I had a, a, a whole uh, sleeve of uh, hot ones ready mm. for you, and we said, this is too hot. These are too many hot ones. we got to put some of these away. We usually do around 10 an episode. Yeah. This is like episode 80-something. Yeah. So we're probably up to around 800 posts. It's a lot of posts. So you were about 9,200 posts deficient on your posts. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, basically, we've got a lot of catching up to do. We have a lot of questions that need to be answered. 
Folks, we're here this week with the master. So I, I guess we should just get it out front before we get into the thing. Uh, saying, what time have you spent on Quora? Um, so I, I didn't. I've never spent like a concentrated period of time on Quora. It's usually been first. Right. So I, 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 I interact with Quora in two ways. First of all, is when I sort of type a question into Google, um, or anything that resembles a question. Like Quora's will usually sort of show up. I and mean, then at some point when I made a Quora account, or I must have made a Quora account for whatever reason, um, I get emails. Like, so I get emails like once every few days with like Quora's that might interest me. And a lot of those Quora's are to do with like bad relationship advice. Interesting. I mean, a lot of it is bad relationship advice stuff. Some of it, oddly enough, is um, I'm just trying to think of the last time, the last time I got a Quora post. I think it had there's a lot of them to do with Jordan Peterson. A lot of Quora's about Jordan Peterson. And I don't know, I don't know whether that says anything about me and my interests or just the types of guys who go on sure. Quora. It's his home um, base. I think it's also your interests. I think that you need to clean your room. <laughs> and you've got they too have a, much chaos. In your they life. have a feed of your room, and they're like, yeah. "Oh, homie, I yeah. could send you oh, some, I know, uh, some. I know what you need to read. If you want, I could yeah, send I'm, you some I, drawings I, yeah, of serpents. I'm, I'm, that could really so help. I'm just looking for my Quora Digest right now. I'm, can I can I read out a few Quora's? I, I won't read out the Please. questions. I'll just read out like the headlines of the emails. Let's Whoever ride the okay. chaos dragon. <clears throat> Let's do it. So I, actually, I, I'm interested to find out whether you guys have covered this or not. Okay, so one that's specifically for Alex um, is Goku currently in his prime. Oh. Absolutely not. <laughs> he is certainly not in his prime. Um, wow. I, I rejected and ignored him. Now he's deleted my number and doesn't try to contact me, question mark. And this is cool. still about okay. Goku? Um, <laughs> hey, you can well. text Goku as many times as you want, buddy. It doesn't. He's not <laughs> yeah, by the he's phone. He's washed up. He's unplugged. I, <laughs> I caught my son playing his Xbox at 12 in the morning on a school night. As a result, I broke his console. And now he won't talk to me. How could I tell him that it's his fault? Yeah, there's a lot of those. <laughs> we yeah. have covered at least 10 of and those then, on the show. <laughs> and then a final one, even though this is far from like the final one. What is considered tall for a male? Um, for a male, is it like, and it's, and it's very like, is four foot 11 tall relative to where you are? Is it five foot? Is it five foot two? It's very, there's like, it's a very number centric one. <laughs> um, yeah. I'm going to say no, yeah, so like, four foot 11, not tall where well, I am. Well, it's tall compared to like a cat. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I guess that's it depends on what you're framing it by compared to like a chimpanzee it's still really tall sure so yeah exactly I, th I think that's actually a good question i feel like it is a quite it is an important like the western said the went western centricism of the internet kind of means that like you know these are these important questions these dis bits of discourse that we have to go in cycles of all the time has a very different sort of set of relations uh in other parts of the world and i think that is an important thing to recognize it's a truly um, international website, Hussein. I know, I know. It's a good, it's a good one. And yeah, I haven't. Oh yeah. Then then finally, final one. Um, is Jordan Peterson a dangerous person? That was the one I got today, actually. And that's that's, that's interesting. Answer. That's I actually am very interested in that one because it implies like he has a deadly stealth to him. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's it, a physicality. It, 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 if you it implies move that one it, finger. It, it, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it, it, it implies that once he's done with his crying, he's 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 got like some moves. Um, <laughs> you know, he's been he's been doing jujitsu like the rest of them. So like you know, once I he finishes once he finishes his ball, then we're then we're ready to brawl. Oh, and this is an angle we don't really talk about on the show too, which is that Quora is like maybe the most democratic of. Uh, Sure. Uh, uh, sources of uh, internet knowledge because other ones will have hmm. like someone who uh, is a, an authority on a subject kind of with right. control over the information flow that you're getting. Ooh. But if you ask any question on Quora, anyone can answer. Yeah. It. And it becomes a very hmm. like people's choice way to find out <laughs> if you have cancer or not. You get slimed. Yeah. <laughs> you, can't get sli you get slimed on most of the website. That's all, all, all yeah. websites really these days, let me tell you. Um, but of course we we're spending too much time for getting into the meat of the thing. Yeah. Um, now we are going to, we open and close the show on a question from last week, but, but before, before that, that, we have our signature segment, which is of course <laughs> our advice at the start of the show is a desperate ploy to get more listeners. We will be doing our recurring segment tips for women. <laughs> tips <laughs> for women. Women, you gotta listen to this. Um, <laughs> we're, we're 
we're here and we have advice for you. Now, we do throw to the guest on these, but we don't want to yeah. make you feel on any pressure to have a tip for women. Hussein, this is this yeah. this is like an opportunity. I know you oh, asked yeah. before what we would do, and I didn't mention you know, this part, yeah, but that's yeah, because there's a raw like, oh, surprise. Is there, is, 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 is there anything I can prepare? And <laughs> you were like, no, just bring yourself. No, and I, was like, I okay, don't want you, you to have prepare. To give, you I have want, to give like sage wisdom to women. Um, and this is what I want though, because if you prepare, it's like who fucking gives a shit? Oh, you wrote down yeah. advice you have for time. a woman. Who cares? I want to know what happens. Gun to your head. Give advice to a woman. <laughs> What, you know, what are you gonna say? You don't know what you're gonna do when the when the shit hits the fan. Here's a tip: oh, pull the fucking oh. trigger. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so, do you have anything you'd like to tell women? And if you don't, that's fine. But also, if you do, that's a maybe yeah. they should hear I mean, this. I mean, I'd like to tell them first and foremost that I'm sorry, just generally. I'm sorry for sure. For, I'm sorry for being me. I'm sorry for being alive. They I'm love sorry. I'm sorry. For women. You know, it's I'm a, sorry for taking your air. I respect you so much. Um, <laughs> and uh, tips, tips, tips. Um, yeah, now how can you better that? Uh, I, I, I would say that I would say that you're perfect. And if anything, if anything, wow. just give yourself more credit. Wow. Yeah, I'm t- I'm tipping my fedora as I'm saying it. It's, it's been um, a while since yeah. since, you know, since we've Remember been re- if if you doubt anything you can also study uh, the blade and you'll be much better at it than any of us. Now, just to be the devil's advocate here, my tip for women's going to be do better. Yeah, knock it off. <laughs> <laughs> Just to have both sides of that coin. If yours is you're perfect the way you are, mine's going to be try a little harder. That's what you're wearing today? <laughs> <laughs> you're going to just walk around like that? I mean, it's your decision. You think that's appropriate, really? Uh, hey, it's not me. Well, anyway, that's going to be the be- end of our Tips for Women segment, and then now on with the rest of the show. <laughs> It's too long. We're not doing the whole thing. No, it's too long. Okay. (laughs) This is our last week on Quora. Our question was, what would you do if a Christian baby held you at gunpoint robbing you? Would you shoot it? Huh. There's a lot of people holding you at gunpoint. Yeah, there's a lot of guns in this episode. This one is somewhat of like a popular meme format on Quora. And we had a pop-up when we logged on that said, congratulations, this is like your most uploaded (laughs) 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 question of all time. So I'm feeling pretty proud about this. Oh, yeah. What do people say? No one has any like real answers. I mean, people were just mad at us and doing little jokes and stuff. <laughs> That's not what this is about. Deploy my tactical atheist baby with a gun as a countermeasure, then go back to my secret hiding spot. Ha, 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 ha. Um, no, you wouldn't. Yeah, I don't know. Who cares? Shoot it. A psycho robber baby with a gun will only become a more dangerous psycho if it grows up. And it sure as hell isn't acting in anything resembling a Christian manner. <laughs> you know what? I got to say that's correct. If baby's going to act like that, I got to take it down. <laughs> that's no Christian. <laughs> it's a hedonist baby. Okay. Uh, this is oh. a casual reminder to our listeners. If you are going to interact with our Quora from the week before, be sure to use the code word scrambled eggs. This will let us know that you're just scrambling it up with the Quora boys. I like this answer. <laughs> um, no, I'd simply mute and block any imbecile who is dumb enough to ask such a moronic question. In fact, I already have. Damn it! <laughs> John Privet, you have blocked Owned, us. Ba- ba- defeated in the battle of ideas. Yeah, that's, that's not And cool. he lives in London with a uh, degree from yeah. like Durham yeah. University. He's a software developer in London. So maybe he's saying you could go and ask him more about yeah. why yeah. he blocked yeah. us. I, he, he's actually, blocked, yeah, he's actually my it. neighbor. Yeah, he's, oh, he has cool. a lot of opinions about babies with guns. That's great. I'm glad to hear that. I would just love to follow up with him if we get the chance. But um, I'm proud of us for doing so well, and it has a bright future for our show um, in that in that we we did it. It said congratulations. In our it did. Day. It said, <laughs> hey, congratulations. You finally did a Christian feed. baby question. Hey, man, you're doing really great with your podcast, it says. <laughs> uh, do you want to introduce our theme for the week, Alex? Yes, our theme for this week, there are so many pressing issues of the day, and a day-to-day template for which to guide your rules can actually be the very ground itself upon which you stand. And that's why the theme this week is philosophy of the ages. Ooh. Ooh. Yeah. I'm pretty proud of how that came out. (laughs) (laughs) I'll actually be selling shirts with that whole thing on it right there that I just said. But uh, we're going to go through the segments. This week's theme is philosophy of the ages. And we are starting with our recurring segment, forbidden knowledge. I didn't even realize that you were riffing that, Alex. I thought that was just like a, a, a an immortal technique lyric or something. 
<laughs> well, the thing is, it can't be an immortal technique lyric because I am selling the shirts. So that's right. That's right. <laughs> I couldn't make money from it that way if actually he had written it. Uh, Would love to have you on, Immortal. <laughs> Do you think you just say the, the first word like it's his first name? Yeah. <laughs> yeah like, immortal, what do you want for lunch? Invincible's <laughs> friend, Immortal Technique. Mr. Technique. <laughs> <laughs> Stop spitting at me. What's with your, your take bars. on 9 11? <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Technique. Where do drugs really come from? <laughs> we do all bush questions. <laughs> <laughs> do you think he? lied and people died take on the bill uh okay so just to explain this uh particular string of questions forbidden knowledge is uh questions of the beyond and maybe things that they don't want you to know yeah three parentheses they <laughs> i think we all understand what kind of segment this is me and my family don't want alex to know it's a family podcast okay uh, what's our first question jeremy what would you do if I want to be eaten up by a human right now? So this is pretty forbidden. <laughs> <laughs> I, I like this question. It does also, mm. and so there's a lot of cannibalism on Quora, but uh, it's like a sex thing, and it, I can't stop thinking about the movie Bones and Doll. Did you see Bones and Doll? No. It's like a sexy um, cannibalism yeah. movie, but they're like vampire. They're like a... They're like X Men. They have superpowers and they can be cannibals to live forever. This is bones and all. This is words. bones and all. I wasn't sure if you were saying bones and doll, like it was two people and one was named Bones. No, it's like doll. I munch you up bones and doll. Okay. Mm. Hussein, would you munch <laughs> me up bones and doll? And what would would you I? Do? Okay. Um, I personally wouldn't. Mm. Um, Thank you. Have you tasted the because forbidden flesh? Hmm? Have I tasted the flesh? Uh, I have not. Um, I'm trying to cut back on meat. Oh, nice. uh, I've been doing so in the past few years. Um, you know, so I, I'm sort of like sticking with my lean proteins. It's um, funny you actually said that because watching that movie, my big takeaway is like, I got to stop eating meat because I'm pretty much <laughs> Timothy Chalamet as a sexy vampire in my day to day life. They just make it look really yeah. gross. But the question the question that's being asked is, what would you do? So yes. can, can you remind me what the question is? What would you just do like in terms of how it's phrased? If I want to be eaten up by a human right now. Right. Because it's not really about me in that case. It's like, well, what would I do if I met someone who said yeah. to me, maybe at a party or like, you know, at a social gathering, mm -hmm. I would like to be eaten up by a human right now. And I suppose it would sort of be, you know, because I, I don't believe I can, I, I'm, I, I have a right to sort of impart like a judgment on what they want to do, right? Okay. Whether it's a kink thing or whether it's just like a hobby. That's their um, decision. I think if it's a man, I think it's like important as well because it's like, you know, one of the crises, the, like the crises of loneliness among men is that like they don't Absolutely. have enough hobbies. So I have no right to sort of tell them that you aren't, you know, you aren't entitled to, um, to, to want. And, you know, and also the other thing about like, you know, the lack of, the lack of eros, the lack of desire and kind of contemporary life. Right. So the idea of wanting something, the idea of wanting to be consumed, there, there's like a beauty in that. And I think I'd have to respect it on that basis. So I would, I would, I would, sh I would nod in my head and be like, I respect you. Right. I don't know what uh, this means for me, but uh, maybe it's a sign of my allyship that I read sure. this question and assumed it was a woman because it was such oh. a beautiful statement. <laughs> mm. I mean, yeah, I, I'm not, you know, I, I don't think that like many men, many straight men are like capable of like producing such a beautiful sentence. But I've so in this sure. scenario, I, I would meet a man who did, who would say that. And I would just be, I, 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 I would respect their, I would respect their decision and I would respect their attempt to assert their own desires in a society that is very hostile towards that. Well, there's a lot of repression, isn't there? Wait, wait, mm. But neither of you would, so you're, neither of you are considering you pass this guy in the party and you're not going to eat him up. Oh, no, I mean, like, is the implication that I'm supposed to eat him up? No, but I think that's, I'm supposed one, of, to eat you that's up right one now? of the options. If someone says to you, I want to be eaten up by a human right now, you just go, sounds good. Meet me in the back room. I'm going to tear your jugular out <laughs> of my goddamn teeth. If you're at a party I, and I, someone I, says, I want I, a beer I struggle right to, now, I mean, you're going to have a beer. I struggle to eat at parties generally. I feel like I feel like it's not a particularly good setting to, like, that's fair. you know, even even even, like, the small plates and the hors d'oeuvres and stuff, mm -hmm. like, is a bit... It's a bit much. Just like, a finger. Wow, I um, couldn't feel yeah. more differently than that. Really? I stay <laughs> eating. I can't stop it. If, if there is food out at a party, I'm just like piling it onto a plate just to like have something to do with my hands, yeah. usually, mostly. This does feel like something you could hear at a party. I feel like if I was at a party, I could hear, I can imagine someone I know being like, 
I'd love to get eaten up by a human doesn't right it, now. Doesn't it yeah. sound it's like, like yeah. the delivery is like, what would you do if I want to be eaten up by a human right now? Like, it's like over <laughs> a din. What, what would you do? <laughs> what would you do? <laughs> what would you do if I said right I now. to be eaten up by a human right now? My <laughs> bones got to get crunched. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's flirty. I don't know what you'd do afterwards. Or like, how would you sort of receive? If you, if you were like, okay, this, this person's like fl- flirting with me. Like, I don't understand how you would respond to that and maybe that's because like i'm not particularly good at flirting um so i wouldn't yeah i, I wouldn't so that's what it is thing. <laughs> okay, so they would say this thing and i would just be like oh, oh cool okay all oh, right i'm uh, so awkward no you gotta nibble you gotta nibble on him you go nibble nibble uh sorry uh yeah just take a little bite just a bite of their arm i could talk about this all day but oh, let's blood. let's see what quora says okay uh, Victor, unfortunately, says... <laughs> That's his I, name, by the way, to be clear. <laughs> uh, uh, I should also say that the person who made this might be named I Am A Pizza? Oh, that is that a complicating dynamic, isn't it? If it's a talking pizza. <laughs> <laughs> and then all the questions are about, like, what kind of burger can I be made into right now? Oh, that's really funny to me. What, what, kind, of, what kind of pizza do How kids do I like? I wish to be food right now. Can I be your <laughs> stew right now? Where do you want to eat me up right now? What, food <laughs> I, what would you do if I'm on your plate for dinner right now? Isn't there something <laughs> deeply disturbed about a pizza asking if it's a stew? You're not a stew. <laughs> that's deranged. <laughs> anyway, Victor says, I would try to convince you this isn't the way, smiley face. Being equal e- being eaten equals death. I don't know what about uh about what struggles you were facing in life, but they will pass. God bless you. God bless you. That's an upvote for us. We got one from Dallas Lace. Um Wood Butcher Butcher says, uh Wood Butcher says <laughs> I know where I would start with a lick and a nibble. Of course, that's assuming a certain gender ID that I prefer. <laughs> Otherwise, my <laughs> offer is there. off the table. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I know I jumped at the at the ball there, but uh, I, I'm up for anything. And then what I'm a pizza says, what food do you want made out of me if I am a male? Make good taste. If Ooh, I am male, make That's interesting. Because you could like talk you could talk to them about like the sort of types of meals that you could make and you could really bore them by like going through very complicated uh recipes. Like you could say kind of you know, they're trying to flirt with you by saying, Oh, I'd love to be eaten right now by you specifically. And you could be like, Well, I would actually love to like put you in a sous vide bag and like keep you there for, you know, a few weeks to like you know, to dry age you. <laughs> Ooh. Um, yeah, you could you could just like talk about lots of different like you know w- very convoluted cooking methods uh, until they just get bored and move on. My favorite part of this question is the, how confusing the yes ending gets, where he's like, "I know where I'd like to eat you," and the pizza's like, "Would you eat a pizza, Dick?" First. <laughs> 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 I'm just a little pizza. Please have sex with me. <laughs> Please fucking busted me. Um, <laughs> I feel like he was he was trying really hard to be the pizza role play, and then someone was like, "I'd have sex with someone who wants to be eaten up," and they're like, "I'm not a pizza, actually. <laughs> I'm a man. I'm a man, I'm a man with have these." Sex with me. <laughs> um, anyway. I, I like this answer by Dan McNellis down there. Uh, go for it. If it was in my power to do so, I would guide you to obtain mental health assistance. In fact, consider that to be my recommendation now if your question was a serious <laughs> one. <laughs> on the other hand, if your question has sexual connotations to it, is an entirely different qu- matter, then I would recommend you to post on a dating app instead of Quora. See, that's wrong, because Quora is here mostly for sex, as far yeah. as I can tell. But then yeah, Quora, Quora is a dating app. Yeah. Uh, I am a pizza responds, not here for date. I hear be food, not date. Thank you, <laughs> I am a pizza. <laughs> that really fleshed this whole thing out uh be sure to check out i am a pizza they only have 216 followers i'm sure they'll love the the attention yeah he's uh mad that people are bullying him though but watch out the first bite is hot <laughs> All right, let's move on to another question. okay we have nine more of these uh this question is what makes you think you can trust what spirits whisper to you so i love the tone on this yeah it's really like you're always saying I can trust what spirits say to me, but what makes you think mm. that? What makes you think that, Usain? Why'd you say that? <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> why, why, did, why, did, why did I say that specifically? What makes you think um, you can trust what spirits whisper to you? 
I mean, not to sort of like go all serious, like like in theological, but in Islamic theology, like we have like the concept of jinn, right? And like you know the sort of spirits that sort of exist, or the spirits that are kind of exist in uh, in the in the real world. And like some of them are, you know, some of them kind of are like divine angels, but others are just kind of spirits that just kind of hang around and don't really do anything. Chaotic and in some neutral. cases they do. And and they do like they just loiter around, yeah. They just vape, or you know, they just vape uh, uh, <laughs> in, in alleyways. Um, but like some of them do are there to just like cause mischief, like cool. kind of harmless mischief. I'm not sure what I'm not sure what the mischief actually entails, but it does sort of imply the idea that yeah, there are like some mischievous spirits that are just there like to kind of mess around with you. Um, That's all cool. of which is to say that actually it touches on something quite you know something important, which is yeah, you shouldn't trust you shouldn't trust like every spirit that you come across. I almost put a gin question in the doc, but it did get very serious in the, <laughs> in the response. The it, was, it was it was something just like uh, the, the, our gin necessarily good or something, oh, sure. um, or necessarily evil. Yeah. And then I was like, I have uh, five thousand words actually to share on that. Um, but yeah. <laughs> the thing about the, when spirits start whispering to you, and there's no feeling like it, folks. It makes you feel very special, doesn't it? And that makes you want to believe yeah. it's true. Believe their sweet lies. It's like when you're a high school kid and the older guy thinks you're cute. It's exactly the mm. same as that. But instead, the guy is much older. As yeah. old as the rocks and sand <laughs> itself. <laughs> I mean, I was going to say that, yeah, if the spirits, a, if a spirit was a woman and I was a teenager, I would listen to that spirit regardless of what, what they said, because yeah. I, I listen to women. Um, and so I also important. will believe everything. I, be, I will believe everything that they say, especially if they're a ghost. Right. Yeah. I know when you're in high school, everybody thinks, oh, it'd be so great to be used by a succubus. And then you grow up and you think about it, There's an age gap there. There's a power oh, gap. Yeah. It's actually really dangerous. <laughs> it's not OK <laughs> that they would the manipulate you that way. Um. <laughs> I would like to read the answers in here. So we are, I think this one might actually be in the Forbidden Knowledge subquora, and that it is full of witches who are quite knowledgeable on the topic. So I want to hear what they have Sure, to say. yeah. Um, Do you want me to read this or you want to read it? Tanvir. I I'll read Tanvir. And Tanvir keep lives in, in mind, Australia. Yeah, that there's a voice you have to do. Keep in mind they live in Australia from 2003 to present. And she says, Yo, have to get. No, I'm not going to do it. Okay. Um, <laughs> I can't do it. If I could do it, I'd do it, but I can't do it. It would be embarrassing. You have to go by how you <laughs> felt. That's not how he sounds. <laughs> by how you felt. Uh, when, when you heard the whisper, and if it is in regards to a positive, heart-driven outcome. Okay. If it was a good and positive feeling, chances are it's a good spirit trying to guide you. And if it's a negative nature, you will have this negative feeling come over you. We all have our own spirits guiding us 24-7 to a certain extent, but they respect our free will. In the same way, we can have dense negative spirits attaching to us depending on our lifestyles and places we visit. So Tanvir says, feel it out. Yeah, kind of just vibe. Mm -hmm. Which, if I was a malicious spirit, the first thing I'd do is have a feel-good vibe. <laughs> mm. That's going to trick you right away. Yeah, that would be part yeah, of Yeah, you can be like a, chill, a chilled-out kind of spirit. I don't feel like that's really the question, though. The question is not, like, which spirits should you whisper or listen to. The question is, what makes you think you can trust them? All right, that's I mean, I think, that I, th I think that you're right in the sense that, like, it is it is very much like if a spirit is talking to you, you believe a spirit is talking to you, you believe that you're special because you're getting attention, right? Yeah. Um, and again, like, you know, in a, in a, in a, in a, in a society where it is very difficult to do that and where like the yearning for community, like connection is, uh, is, is ever growing the idea of someone paying attention to you, especially like in the afterlife. Um, you know, that must, that will probably make you feel really good. Um, and it can also make you like lower your guard, uh, and become a victim of mischievous spirits. That's right. Um, all of which is to say, but I think of it, if it did happen to me in hindsight, and a spirit was like trying to get me to do something, uh, even if it was something minor, I would just politely say no on the basis that like, well, this doesn't really seem to be like my kind of, you know, I I, I planned out my day and this and it, I, I can't really accommodate you. I don't right? really feel send comfortable. Me, send me send me a Google Calendar invite, and maybe we can sort of discuss next but what, steps. But what if the spirit keeps telling you that you're very mature for your realm, <laughs> for your physiology? <laughs> You're different from the other people who are still alive. I'm very yeah. into the idea of a spirit sending me a Google yeah. calendar invite. <laughs> <laughs> a spirit that's like very impressed with like my uh with the books on my uh, on my on my on my shelf. It's like wow, you read like real literature. Wow. Not like younger not like people these days who yeah. are who are who are too busy on TikTok and on their phone. My spirit keeps trying to get me to read Lolita. <laughs> 
<laughs> Which about a little um, mortal. <laughs> yeah, I, w- I was thinking there was a very something funny about the idea of like a spirit desperately trying to get someone's attention, but they're too busy on their phone to like really realize what's going on. Yeah. <laughs> That would be sad if that were to happen. There's a lot in the comments <laughs> here about people saying spirits aren't real, uh, go to a doctor, spirits aren't real. And for those people, you're jealous that I'm talking to spirits. They told me not to trust you, and that's kind of why I'm on your team. <laughs> I like this guy's answer. He also lives in London. He says, you can't. They are ghosts and envious. And envious. <laughs> All right. They're petty. <laughs> you say so. Well, I would but like hate to... Not, but yeah, they're, they're really envious that we all have to pay taxes and they don't. Oh, uh, yeah. <laughs> Only two things are certain in life, and then yeah. they've already gotten one of them. When you get one, you <laughs> lose the other. <laughs> you lose the taxes <laughs> when you die. Uh, let's move on to our next topic here. Uh, this is still on the, uh, the immortal questions or whatever the fuck Philosophy, of, Philosophy the ages. of the ages. It's such an important theme. Topic. Uh, we are moving on to the... And we haven't been back here in a while. Oh, the Quillosophy set. That's right. And this is the last time you'll ever hear this sound effect this episode. You better enjoy it now. Because you're not hearing it again. It's not coming back. I have 32 sounds, each stronger than the last. (laughs) Uh, This question is, and this is a philosophy question. What do you want me to do for you? I will do what you want. Oh, man. Anything? (laughs) (laughs) And then there's one comment that says... Can I have $77 trillion, please? Shut the fuck up. (laughs) And another comment that says, excuse me. Excuse me is kind of where I'm coming from. 77 is too many trillion. Yeah. Ask for one trillion at most. One's just says, fuck off. Oh, yeah, look at that. One says, pray. One says, I don't know you. on Honestly, nothing. I want my person back. (laughs) What happened to you, OG Bobby Johnson? So this is just to reiterate. The question is, what do you want me to do for you? I will do anything you want. I, I'm genuinely stumped by this. And I don't know whether I'm stumped by this just on the basis of like, if someone was to say, even in my real life, like, I will do anything you want me to do. Like, I, I think I would just freeze. I wouldn't know sure. what to do or how to react. <laughs> I think I'd say, um, eat me up. Yeah, probably gobble me up like a pizza. <laughs> probably treat me like a pizza and put me in my, bur- in my burning flesh yeah. in your mouth. Slice me eight, wa- eight ways and <laughs> take a bite. Get a circular knife and go wild on my skin. Fold me up, daddy. <laughs> yeah, do it New York style. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I want you to do for me. Leave the crust. <laughs> um. Yeah, this, so this question kind of gives one imposter syndrome, does it not? Yeah, thank you, Alex. To believe that someone could have want, uh, do what you want. I almost feel that there's like a sexual implication here that's not quite fleshed out, and then that way it's like a first draft, and I love that about it. And uh, mm. yeah, I'm hoping that uh, they get to do all the sex stuff that they're looking sure. for. This question is from uh, Bob Kennedy, who studied Dairy Farm Senior Secondary School. And they are a contributor in God Pussy, is the that, space. What is that? Oh, that's just vagina. Uh, okay, that's never that's mind. just like normal porn. Okay. All right, never mind. Don't look at that. <laughs> I was really Deceiving excited. name. I really thought that was going to be like biblically accurate vagina. Deceptively funny name, but actually just normal porn on the internet. Oh, Nothing man. interesting there. Okay, that's fine. Um, yeah, this person is just horny, I think. Do women and men swallow each other's juices? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> what a good question. I believe the answer is yes. Uh, and then he also has a question. Should my sister have the right to give meds at hours she wants to? Why does my sister want me to, want me submissive to her and not allow me female companion, but wants me to marry a man for money? All right, so there's a misdirect there. <laughs> <laughs> does give meds mean something else? Like, I don't understand how that went from yeah, giving that one, meds it's to... It's not a finished post. You got to redo that one. That one's this not done yet. Guy. Are, the, are, the med, are the meds, like, ADHD related? <laughs> <laughs> it's Vyvans. Um, so this guy is very, very um, submissive, is his thing. He's horny and he's submissive. His other So that that's why the, what do you want me to do for you? I'll do what you want. His other questions are like, how does a feminine submissive man... Come eating man, find a sugar daddy to vet as much female hormones, testosterone blockers, and chemical castration to uh, help my body female and good girl for you. 
Can I just say the word cum eating as one word is confusing to It is. At. It does. It's it, hard to read. It sends the mind <laughs> askance. The first thing I look at it and then my brain just uses the word meat in the middle and is like, this is a mm. food thing. And it's not. And then well, lastly, I'll say he posted this to um, Little Show Offs. The mm. subquarrel little shop. He says, I dare not click on that one. Uh, <laughs> I'll, I'll read you the description of it. He says, I'm a submissive femin- femin sissy who loves men's men and couples and 70 year olds. Why do they love me so much? Why do they love me so much? It's because you're such a good... Because you're so submissive. You're such a little show-off, I guess. <laughs> Men with small penises who enjoy displaying them for the world to see. That is what little show-off says. That is not what I would have guessed that is. <laughs> That's so interesting. Hey, well, you know what? Uh, good luck to Bob Kennedy out there. I hope that you find a 70-year-old and some come <laughs> to eat and you get all the hormones you want. Yeah, I hope mm. you read the Bible and discover God pussy. <laughs> <laughs> I hope you read the Bible, Karma Sutra, and discover God pussy. Okay, let's move on to the next question. Okay, here. all right. I'm glad that we got that. To really the escalated of that. when we went to the guy's page. I didn't <laughs> yeah. see that coming. Okay. <laughs> well, he wanted to eat that cum. Uh, this is another question. What happens when an empath gets angry? So, <laughs> so good question. Good answers on this, rather. Um, we you all know that empaths. Know. Empaths are more powerful emotionally yes. than your mm. than your average. Well, they read human. other people's emotions. They can read them, but that's because their their power levels are higher. Yes, mm. they're more midichlorians. But they they take on <laughs> they take on the emotions of other people. So if they interact with somebody who is very sad, they get sad. But if they interact mm. with someone who's very angry. They might be thrown into a fit of rage. Oh, to throw it back yeah. at them. Yeah. They, well, they they would reach like a lot because my understanding is, and I have no understanding at all, like in context of like what. <laughs> um, but like, so my assumption is that like they feel they feel more intensely. They can reach feelings. I I'm gonna call it feelings too. Oh, where, yeah. where like you can access you can access like the higher planes of emotion like you think you've been happy in your life empaths can do it like mm. in a more significant and holistic way you think you've been angry you think you've been horny in your life fucking hell an empath like you know is uh they, they will experience like sexual euphoria in a way that you can only imagine and i imagine right. like and in this case if they're angry then they're going to be able to tap into like a type of anger that turns them into um, like I, I guess turns him into like a super saiyan. Yeah, <laughs> it is. It is that kind of implication, right? It's like the army is ninety yeah. percent yeah. empaths. <laughs> The, the, empath, the empath will be able to perfectly recite an anime villain monologue um, in a way that, like, none of us will ever be able to do off the bat, off our own backs. In Alex's opinion of empaths, they're like Wolverine. And, <laughs> and the army has employed millions or thousands of fucking empaths. And every day they go to them and they say, like, I want to kill. And then the empath soldier goes, I want to kill. <laughs> they have adamantium <laughs> feelings. <laughs> <laughs> and they can use them for how the whatever they want. That's awesome. Um, yeah, specifically, I am picturing Dio from JoJo's Bizarre Adventure. Sure. And when I think of your regular empath. And boy, are those adventures bizarre. And they're bizarre. These wacky now adventures. Now, let's, let's read some e- answers sure. here because people are really tapping into this. Yeah. Uh, when an empath becomes angry, it's actually grown in, into a rage by the time the empath expresses that anger. Empaths withhold instances in which they are angered or upset because they don't want to inconvenience others or because they feel so- sorry towards others' feelings or because they are just too damn nice. And they hold it in <laughs> and hold it in some more to the point where they now... Where now the empath's anger has reached full blown rage. Okay, I like that one because that implies like if you've seen rage, that's an empath. <laughs> it's yeah, not like run of the mill <laughs> anger. Uh, there's mm. a quarter plus answer here. Nancy Grisham says, "I'm an empath and I've been pretty angry right now. Uh oh. Primarily at the narc, but I'm angry at myself for chasing a mirage for over a year. Okay, you're gonna make this about yourself already." Oh, uh, Hussein, are you familiar with narc talk? Like uh, narcissists, narcissist discussion on the internet because it's a lot of Quora. Yeah, I I wasn't actually. Um, I'm very intrigued by it now because obviously because obviously narc talk narc talk implies something 
uh, that clearly Knock Talk isn't. Yeah. yeah. It, it's like they talk about narcissists the way that you're probably familiar with discussing like werewolves. <laughs> right. Yeah, we've okay. gotten in trouble for saying this in the past. I feel like we made fun of Narc Talk on here and we got a bunch of emails that were like, <laughs> this is a very serious issue. And we're so, like, so, so not, are so, werewolves. So <laughs> they're, not, they're not narcissists, but they, do they like hate narcissists. Like they don't believe that they're narcissists. And so it's a group about. Do they bit? Yeah, like, are, or are they narcissists? I know it's like a narcissist. It's people who uh, have been wronged by a narcissist get together and they're like, ah, they made okay. me live All in right. a van for 10 years. Never again. <laughs> it does not sound fun. They kept trying to get me to eat them up. <laughs> I won't. Just because that's what you want. <laughs> they kept saying, rip off my pepperonis. <laughs> I will not do what you want. <laughs> I'm still stuck on the pizza guy. I'm sorry. I'm so. I'm so I'm so intrigued by this. I'm looking at I'm looking it up right now just because I feel like yeah, I could go down some real um I could go down some real uh, rabbit holes here. You wanna read this one, Alex? What's up? Okay, so there's there's an answer hidden behind Quora Plus here, which we do not pay for and never will. No. Uh and uh before we get into it, I will say he has a degree in biology and astronomy. <laughs> And uh he says when an empath finally snaps and has just about enough of the crap. Either run or be on the brutal and vicious blunt end of their explosive rage. Because empaths don't snap often, and it takes a lot for them to do it after mm. years and years of bottling it up. So that, I mean, there's sure. like another thousand words, but that is the common thread across all wait, of these, wait, is wait, that wait, empaths wait, wait. actually don't ever snap at you before, which I'm not sure is true. He goes on to say, that's the danger of being an empath sometimes. We are masters of wearing the clown's mask. That sometimes <laughs> that trait of ours could be our undoing. You ever see someone think like, wow, you're pretty good at wearing that clown mask. How long did you go to school for that? Pennywise is who I say that to. <laughs> that thing is pretty much glued to your face, huh? <laughs> You do a flip. I love I love the like incel version of empaths though, where they're just like you while you were out partying, I studied the emotion. <laughs> I studied the feelings. <laughs> yeah, while you were out partying and asking to be eaten alive, uh, I was yeah, I I was I I I was studying uh I was studying like all the elevated uh emotions that you'll never be able to right. uh, understand. I did the drama mask and the happy mask. I have heard every radio. <laughs> maybe, well, maybe album. that's the dynamic. Like, maybe, like, does does the empath see the narcissist as like the ultimate challenge? Right. You know, in, in some ways, they sort of complement each other because, like, yeah, you can't really have two empaths because I think that would be too messy. But mm, too the way in which you balance it out, like, you know, yeah, like a narcissist, someone, yeah, a, you know, you're, you're never going to quite understand that emotion, and so for an empath sees that as a challenge. Yeah, it's a yin and yang situation. And yeah. that's why they go together so well, and only to tragic <laughs> results, unfortunately. Um, <laughs> Two empaths, they just end up like shooting beams at each other, like in Harry Potter or something. Everybody gets hurt. <laughs> Everybody gets hurt. All right, let's do another question. Um, this is another philosophy question. And this is directed towards uh, all of us, I think. Don't you have any friends? <laughs> I like this one a lot. This is real mom posting. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they all exist on the computer. Go outside. Yeah. <laughs> Don't you have any I, friends? I, I, yeah, I have. I, and I have a real life friend. Uh, she's she's a ghost. Uh, it says that I'm really mature for my age. <laughs> and I have a great taste in books. No, I don't want you interacting with her. She, she, she is not your friend. This is from uh, this question is written by someone named Billy Harper. And uh, I like some of, almost all of his questions are about the Latter Day Saints, but he also has one that is, "What will a woman argue about?" Oh, I love that. What will a woman argue about? <laughs> <laughs> um, I guess like uh, Can guys and girls ever get along. The moon. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That is I don't true. know. We're not answering that one right now. No, we're not. We're not we're doing, we're answering. Don't, don't you, you have, have any friends? friends. And uh, <laughs> some of these answers here are very strong. Luke T says, nope, not many, TBH. And then uh, one says, yes, I do have friends. And then one says, I used to have a lot of friends. Um, yeah. WJC Johnson says, I have friends and I value them as true friends are rare and difficult to find. Mm. So that's kind of nice. <laughs> <laughs> So that, that's that one. That's one of those ones where the uh, the title's doing all of the work. Not yeah. a lot of substance to it. No, let's move on to another one. That's but, a short. That's a quickie. Let's do this other one. Or unless you have more on friends. Friends. 
are there till the end. Some are silver and some are gold. Uh, here's another question. Why don't more people dine in Dash? You literally get a, f- a meal for free. Okay, so this is cop posting. You get a snitch. Yeah. You get, like, you get, yeah, like, you know, depends on the type of meal you have. But, like, I do know someone when I was at, when I was in college, like, you know, they tried to do a dine and dash in a Chinese restaurant. And it was really weird. We didn't expect them to do it. And also, like, we all had money to pay for it. I don't understand why he did this. But he didn't really get that far because we had, like, an all-you-can-eat buffet thing. Um, and so, like, he yeah, he wasn't really able to run that far because he did get, like, a cramp in his stomach. <laughs> <laughs> that's so embarrassing that's so cool. i would never recover <laughs> you tried to steal until your tummy hurt <laughs> get out of here it's definitely something you can't do it with a group without telling them that's yeah. very rude because they'll yeah. just be like i know who yeah. ran away go get him <laughs> it was it was a straight it was very strange yes yeah, so, so that's my answer to it, it, it sure. it's a very risky move because depending on what you had like you know, if you haven't let your food properly digest, like you're not going to be able to get that very far. The basic problem with it, and I think this is really what the question is tapping into, is that it's against the law. And that's why yeah. more people don't do it. It's also just like immoral. <laughs> it's because you get one GTA star the second you leave the restaurant. <laughs> I like the idea of just like sociopaths on, on Quora just being like, why aren't you stealing more? It's free. <laughs> why will no one eat me? You get free stuff and you get the thrill. <laughs> the thrill is what <laughs> dine and dashing is all about. It's not about the money. Yeah, that's really true. Like, people aren't dine and dashing at like five star restaurants no. that much at the time. Because free souling could get you killed. But dine and dash is pretty low stakes. Is maybe the move then to dine and dash at a fancy restaurant because they'll never see it coming? Uh, sure. Yeah. I don't know. Right? Why, why would they not see that coming? Isn't that the other way around? No. They're not looking out because the kind of people who dine and dash don't go to like. A place where you have to wear a suit. It's low class people, Alex. Is that what you're trying to say? These people don't have class, and they're trying to get a free meal by running away until their tummy hurts. (laughs) I think it's the other way around. I feel like if it's more expensive, you're more likely to dine and dash. You get that bill, and it says, like, well, you go to a restaurant that, like, doesn't even have prices on it on the menu, and then you get the bill, and it's, like, $1,000. You're like, I'm out of here. I know that's how you feel, but how often does it happen? Every day. (laughs) In well, that's city? why. That's why if you're going to dine and dash, you should do it at like small plates restaurants, right? Okay. It feels like it's. It feels like it's less risky to do it. Like tapas. <laughs> uh, no, that can be dangerous. Like sure. what I, I guess. What like, are you thinking? You like? know those sort of. You know those like sort of very fancy restaurants where like you get like you know a big plate with like a very small. Um, oh sure. Uh, yeah, like a, what you call it. Um, I keep thinking, I, I, I want to say oyster, but actually it's not like scallop. Like you get like a yeah. one single scallop that's Ooh. like dressed in a sort of like, you know, basil gel or whatever. Um, and uh, like that's going to cost you like 45. Well, yeah, I, I say like probably higher than that, like probably 80 or 90 pounds. Like, I don't know what the US conversion is, but like you won't be full up enough to like have that be a problem i still keep going back to like <laughs> still of yeah, the cramp. Still, i don't still, think the cramp is usually i don't think they're usually chasing you is the thing you're you just gotta walk da- away the dash is where you're concerned <laughs> the second you start dashing it's over you know you do? <laughs> you know you dash do? out of it dine and dash but drop a big tip oh uh, right so like, let's say it's like a i'm on your meal. team you give a 30 dollar put 30 dollars like this is all tip I'm not paying for the meal. And then the waiter's like, I'm not going to. I want to clarify before I run. <laughs> you write it down. You but, write yeah, it down on but, a napkin. But, 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 I, but I, don't, I, I don't have an issue with you, the waiter. I have yeah. an issue with the chefs. I, ha- I hate chefs. <laughs> they suck. Fuck chefs. I just finished binging the bear. <laughs> and I'm mad. At what are they always anymore? yelling about back there? <laughs> I couldn't bear to finish it, and uh, I'm doing puns. <laughs> Pass this along. I've, uh, this is all written on a napkin, by the way. <laughs> I, I think if I was going to do it, I'd do it at an unorthodox pay-style uh, uh, restaurant. Like, I'd go to a Fogo de Chao. What, what, how, do they, how do you pay there? So they just bring around big heaping plates of, uh, of like, steaks, and you just, like, keep mm. them coming. It's like a b- rotating buffet kind of thing. Okay. And that kind of... Uh, a uh, non-stop sure. uh, wave after wave thing makes me feel like I wait till they leave, yeah. put something on my plate, just walk right out of there because they're not going to be looking for you. They're going right. to be getting your next little yummy. I think mm. I'm wearing a Groucho Marx mask, and then when I leave, I take it off so they don't know what I look like. Oh, 
that works for most crimes. It does work for almost every crime. <laughs> Jeremy cracks crime. Yeah. Check out my episode of Tears of a Clown about crime. About crime. That just came out this week. Look forward to that. <laughs> All right, well, uh, let's move on from this one. Okay. I feel like we've discussed every possible yeah. scenario. We didn't even read any answer. This one sickens me. <laughs> Everyone just says because it's bad. Because to it do. is dishonest. It is a, it is against the code of the samurai. <laughs> 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 okay, this is a similar question. This is still in philosophy. What would happen if it gets proven that human girls are supposed to be born with pink skin, yellow irises, and scar like ridges on their cheeks? If they aren't, then they aren't earthlings. See, this one is the mm. most philosophical of them all, I yeah. think. What would happen? It challenges my perceptions. The yeah. question the question ultimately is like, what if what if a woman is not what if a woman looks weird? That yeah. seems to sort of be Yeah, what if girls what look if, what, different? Or no. Yeah. It's what if um, girls were supposed to look different and if they didn't look like that, they aren't from Earth. So I guess it would imply that all women are not it, from Earth. It's a triple negative is what happened there. Mm. <laughs> They added the word not too many times in there, but specifically weird with pink skin. Yeah. Yellow, I, beautiful but yellow iris. Is, is like is, a cat. Is not the implication that all women are from another planet in that sense? From Jupiter, perhaps? To get more stupider? No. Men are from Jupiter, I thought, to uh, get more stupider. I women went to are college. from Venus. No, I went to college to get more knowledge. That's true. <laughs> I know that. <laughs> I don't remember specific. I mean, th you're talking about the world as it is. We're talking about it as it should be. Okay. The question mm. is, what would happen if it gets proven that young girls are supposed to be born with pink skin, yellow irises, and scar like ridges on their cheeks? Fact. If they aren't, then they're they aren't Earthlings. Okay. So, so all you know, women. This, are this is planet. this is like very oddly specific. I don't really watch a lot of sci-fi. So is he like referring to a specific kind of like character, or is this just like something that he's the, the person's come up with his head? Um, uh, along yeah. the lines of, I think women should look this way, and they should have scars and on their cheeks. And if they don't, then they're weird. I, th I think it would. The implication, right, is that we would be a hunter predator species from space, right? If the human women are like Earth women are, are actually an extinct race of people that you <laughs> can't see anymore because we hunted them all. Um, would you be mm. surprised to discover that the person who asked this, Ethan Clark, has three hundred and twenty nine questions all about how w human women have pink skin and yellow irises earth girls I are would, they easy i would not be surprised i would be i i admire the consistency yeah in this like he's whatever's happened i'm really interested in like how he sort of has landed on this point that no this is what women should look like and the fact that they don't is the weird thing the ridges are what's getting me what's the best pr proof to prove to doctors that human girls have bright pink skin and vibrant yellow irises I don't know what the <laughs> best proof is of that. Is this a is this a Marvel thing? Because he says, "How do I tell my wife that Guardians of the Galaxy taught me that human girls have bright pink skin and vibrant?" Oh, virus. I don't remember that being a thing there. I mean, I can kind of see it, but I don't know if I'm just believing this uh, wonderful fantasy that's been painted for me. Jeremy's now googling girl pink skin. Uh, <laughs> uh, the the Krylurians have pink skin, but not yellow eyes. But they do kind of have those ridges on their cheeks. Yeah. So this is an official Marvel question. I think he's for saw... core readers. Marvel question of the week. Oh, they do have yellow, yellow eyes. I think that he saw this movie and he was like, "This is what real women are." More of are. this. <laughs> Finally, one of these real women I'm looking for. We do love it, folks. Ladies, why don't you have pink skin, yellow irises, and ridges on your cheeks? Baby, you're making me feel like Star Lord. <laughs> <laughs> There's no answers on this, by the way. People, are, there's two answers, and they're just like, "You're seek help." <laughs> That's fine. You're not well. It was an interesting philosophy question, though. Let's move on to our politics segment, the quiz course. Okay. No, damn it. <laughs> we haven't done the show in two weeks. Can you tell? Can you tell by my button pressing? It's no, all over no, the place today. No. It's a mess. <laughs> the quiz course. Today's top political questions brought to you by the internet. Laura.com. Most inquisitive minds here are here on the <laughs> questions website. Now, we get sent a lot of questions that are just uh, st straight up racism. Yeah. There's very little we can do with it. <laughs> yeah. No, for real. People will send, and, you know, I, I appreciate that people send us questions and it's our job to curate them. It's not your job to curate them. So keep sending them. But sometimes it'll just be like, 
Should Asian people exist? <laughs> it's like, <laughs> why are white women the only What an interesting one? question. Well, no, like, you know, I, the, the question should be really be like, what if Asian people were supposed to have scars on their cheeks yes. and yellow eyes? That's yes. a great question. Mm. Ridges, really, is what we're discussing. Um, but that's not our question for today. The thing is, um, while many of them are just racist and they are kind of fun to read not on a podcast, yes. um, sometimes the phrasing on these questions is so powerful that it becomes a broader discussion entirely. And sure. I'm hoping this one, this one, this example okay. brings that to the table today. Would America be better off if minorities were sheeple? Sheeple. Mm. Have you okay, thought so about if that? They were, if they were part sheep. <laughs> they were sheep people. Yeah. Sheeple. I guess this is someone who thinks too highly of minorities. He thinks that they should be uh, uh They're too bold. Yeah. By half. <laughs> uh, they're, 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 they're like, uh, I guess... Well, they're fully people. Yeah. I think that. This is, okay, so all minorities, specifically to America. So in America, I know, like, soon most Americans will speak Spanish over English, but I still think most Americans, like, as a plurality are white. Okay, so you have, like, 40% of the country's white or something. 60% are a sheep-human hybrid. (laughs) (laughs) Timid by nature. (laughs) With a wonderful fluffy wool coat <laughs> that, that keeps them warm in the winter months. <laughs> <laughs> and do they not have more in common together than against the human white menace? Sure. Uh, and so would that would America be better off in that scenario? And I, for one, can't say. It's very different than the world we live in. Mm. Yeah. Well, we'd have a lot more um, wool. We'd have far more wool. We'd become a wool powerhouse. Yeah, we'd have more wool mm. to go around. We'd be like mega Ireland. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I mean, it doesn't like it doesn't sort of like eradicate the problem because presumably, like, bearing in mind that, like, you know, take taking from the position that he does, this person doesn't mean sheep people. Um, although, you know, this is uh, uh, I, I'm taking the charitable position that he was, but like, say he wasn't. Say okay. say what they meant was like, what if what if uh, minorities were all submissive? The issue, like the the paranoia of like right wing chuds, is that is about being outnumbered, right? Mm-hmm. And so I don't understand what the sort of benefit would be if like you just created an even bigger number because at the moment minority is such a big question and like you know i can i can only i can only speak in very general terms but like the key thing is that like the minorities don't all think the same way right right there are like contradictions and conflicts between them um which like are reflected in politics but if you just create if you said what if we just turn minorities into like one group um it still doesn't solve your problem of like feeling like you're outnumbered or not represented right. as like a member of like the white majority right like you are still being confronted by a much larger group of people who now have a singular grievance against you specifically but they're little sheep so they're just so timid and shy it's, it's so cute it. yeah i mean that is, that is the lesson, yeah but it is the lesson that i learned that i got when i watched that movie lamb um, <laughs> in, in which in which they answer they ask the question what if a boy was a lamb Oh wow! I haven't heard of this one. Yeah, and, and what if an incredibly jacked parent comes in the middle of the night and just and like can, like crushes your bones? Whoa! Does anybody eat the boy lamb <laughs> in the movie? I think the boys. I think the boy is fine. The, the boy who is a she, who is a lamb. Yeah. Um. But it was just, it was this very amusing. Like, it was a very like I don't know. It was very sort of typical a24 film but like the jacked the jacked sheep or the jacked ram that sort of shows up at the end really <laughs> really is something else. Um. Back to the question here, although I will certainly check out Lamb, the hit motion picture. Um, I don't know if this is on controversy. Oh, we lost the camera? Oh, the internal temp's too high because it's spring and 50? <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, we've cut to just Hussein for this part. No, we have our camera. Oh, yeah, shit. Oh, yeah, man. What's this, up, this Zoom? nightmare to edit, dog. <laughs> I Welcome hate back, that. Alex. I had to edit the last like five or six of My them. My computer's going the to explode. The minute Alex comes home. <laughs> We're doing <laughs> triple features. Um, three angles. Anyway. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Uh, what? It, uh, so the, I understand like the like implicit like... Uh, so I don't know what community this is in. Of uh, There are like core communities that are just like uh, racist chat. Log on and be racist. Like, um, is mm-hmm. it okay to be white quota or controversial chat is usually just like, right. is my skin pure? Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, 
But this one's a little uh, uh, bungled. I can tell that they were going for just like, what if other races submitted to our domination and rule as right. sheep mm. people? Yeah. Um, but but it, it would unite them against us. Again, the fact that they would all be sheep would unite them as a herd. It would. It would. It, genuinely, it would. And that's the moral of Christianity. I think we should do it. Why am I still looking at the camera? It's I don't off. Know. Are you this doing one's bad. <laughs> I hope you're all happy with how this uh. went. <laughs> we can't. We have to freeze. We have to put this camera in like a refrigerator in order to do the show. <laughs> it is room temperature in here. Uh, would you guys want to be sheeple? I think I'd be okay with it, being a sheep. I'd Sounds be fun. fine. You can, ah. you can eat me. <laughs> Go ahead, eat me. <laughs> Do you want to read yeah, one more wh- question? Sorry, what were you saying? Um, well, I was, I was gonna, I was gonna say something about like you Please. know being the sheeple at the party. That's just asking people like, would you eat me? Uh, would you really eat me? Would you crush my bones? Uh, <laughs> that's, that's all I really want. Um, would I be happy being a sheeple? I don't know. It would sort of depend on like, would I still have to go to my day job? Like, would I still have to pay taxes? Like, would yeah, I have to do? That is a good like, question. Yeah, because like there are some important questions. If you want to, if you want to turn all the minorities into sheep human hybrids, right? Like. There, there is a question of ecology. There is a question of like land management. You know, you're creating a, you're creating like a new species. Question of um, land management. <laughs> yeah, you've got to like, you know, you've got to really think this through. Like, you're changing your entire society. Like, do you have enough like arable land to make this like a functional like fantasy for you? Um, like, really think about whether you actually want this. Think about what you're asking here. Yeah. If they were <laughs> sheep people. <laughs> That's what you said. <laughs> <laughs> I guess at the end of the day, the question is, as always, what do you want me to what do, do you for you? What do you want me to do for I you? I will do what you want. <laughs> what is it? Do I be a sheep person? Do I become lamb boy? <laughs> <laughs> Are we going to go out on one more? We're, we're running okay. a little long here as this is the first time this has ever happened. Uh, do you want to do Corbin and Fruit so that I'm not a liar about my I was joke thinking the same thing. Where I said you're never going to hear that again. Because okay. it would be weird if you just never hear it again. This is, of course, our religion segment. Fruit. Forbidden fruit. <laughs> that one's long, too. Okay, here's a question. Our final question How woke is the Bible? Now, this is an Ooh. election year. So keep that in mind. Jeremy's crossing his arms like a bad boy. <laughs> um, uh, the how Bible woke, does have how woke is the Bible? So this is the thing is famously the Bible's like pretty woke. Yeah. Is when you actually read it, it's always just like, you know, hey, do what you want, man. Yeah. God notably has to be called he, he him. Right. With capital letters. Mm. Pronouns it's like the most, front. It's like the biggest mm. pronouns. It's one of the you have to capitalize them. Yeah, it's ridiculous. Mm. Um, you know, it it, well, it declares that it's a religion where like everyone is accepted regardless of like race or gender, and that seemed that seemed a lot like a big DEI like department to me. Right. Yeah. Uh, there's that whole thing about sin and punishment and hell, which if that's not cancel culture, yeah. you know, kind of what is? It's kind of the original cancel yeah. culture. Yeah. So. Yeah, it's pretty damn woke. As and a matter of fact, I mean, isn't the, books- the, the actual Sorry, sincere yeah. thing? Because I've I've seen like I've seen um like trad like right wing kind of like trad Catholics kind of like, yell about this online and their sort of contention. I mean, like they have like a lot of kind of very complicated, well, not complicated, but like very sort of convoluted statements about like who like at what point is Christianity woke or not? But their sort of central tenet is like the Old Testament was not woke and the New Testament was woke. Agreed. Right. Um, I like that. But and the that's, old a di- Testament, that's a differential. They made it woke. The Old Testament has all the best stories. It's like uh, the, the the two daughters who gang rape their father so that they can have right. extra of his children. And it's just like, I don't know what my point was for that, but isn't that crazy? The Bible. <laughs> and then the New Testament is just, uh, they have one chapter that's just a, an episode of a Disney Star Wars show. Yeah, the New Testament is just like <laughs> on sharing. <laughs> Jesus had three loaves of bread. Um, <laughs> Boring. Boo. It's better when it's more high fantasy stuff. Yeah. So you know what? I'm gonna go mm. ahead and say it. Christianity. They made Judaism woke. They made Judaism woke, and it's uh, and yeah. That's it's a good. That's a good. That's a good take. If that's you want to be take. truly trad, you have to convert to Judaism. 
It's one of the most <laughs> based things is to Extremely be chosen. Extremely trad. <laughs> <laughs> um, are there any answers in here that aren't just like explaining the Bible for an <laughs> extended uh, period of time? Let's see. This is the problem you get with this segment. Uh, not at all, uh, says EO Mill. Great name. <laughs> when Miriam and Aaron, who were sister and brother respectively of Moses, rebuked Moses for marrying a black woman. <laughs> Wait, what? We remember. all remember this one. Uh, as in Numbers 12, 1, Yehovah <laughs> inflicted Miriam with leprosy until Moses pleaded with Yehovah to heal her. So this is backing up what we said, which yeah. is the Old Testament is not woke. The Old Testament hated DEI. <laughs> it had a pre-woke period. <laughs> Of the Old <laughs> Testament. <laughs> uh, damn, that's some good stuff, though. This that's makes me want to reread the Bible. <laughs> yeah, dude. <laughs> it depends what part you read. Yeah, people, honestly, everyone's saying New Testament woke as fuck, Old Testament hell no. Okay, yeah, and that's from the Atheism Now account. So I think they mm. know their stuff. Yeah. yeah. Or but they you're don't. are thinking about it a lot. Although this guy, Rick, says everything woke is evil from Satan. The Bible is the opposite of woke. I think It sounds stupid, but I think it really is that simple for a lot of people. <laughs> We're just like, this is the thing I don't like and the thing I do like. No, they're not similar. <laughs> they're what are you opposite. talking about? Literally opposite. <laughs> By definition. Uh, Jesus is the definition of woke, for he is risen. <laughs> Let's go. Let's go. That's the episode. He kind of did wake up after three days. Wake me day. young. <laughs> <laughs> Son of the lamb. <laughs> All right, we're closing out here. That's been the show. Jesus is three guys, though. He's really a they, them. He really, there's so much to work with. All right, here. sorry. I'll and, stop. I'll stop. And yet it's all I'm over. Done. I'm done. It's all done. <laughs> we're going to think of a question to leave on. And yes. the, in the meantime, before we whip that up, Hussein, where can our listeners find you at home and abroad? Uh, yeah, well, you can find me at home in London with all the other core races, uh, who, all the other core, core, like core posters, not core races, because that's for you guys. Um, we are not in London. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Everyone uh, stop uh, saying yeah. we're in London. <laughs> All, all the people who have like various opinions about spirits and whether they'd mislead you or not. Um, you can listen to me on trash future. You can also listen to me on 10,000 posts. Uh, those are the two podcasts that I do. Uh, they come out, uh, twice weekly. Yeah. Um, I'm on a lot of podcasts a week and I don't realize it until afterwards, or you can follow me on Twitter slash X H Kazwani. Um, yeah, I think that's kind of it. Well, you make it look easy, honey. Um, <laughs> For our show, there are bonus episodes every Thursday where we go on other websites, facebook.com. Oh, yes, the show is on patreon.com slash Uh We go on facebook.com. We go on twitter.com. We go on Reddit. A lot of time spent on Reddit. Yeah. This week, we're going to read a Wikipedia article. I can't wait for that. Yeah. Um, also, sometimes we'll just like follow a obscure website that no one has ever heard of yeah. and click around on all the little tabs. And that's yeah. always fun for me. Um, so be sure to check that out. Support the show. Patreon.com slash core raiders with thanks to viewers like you, we can read about <laughs> eating a pizza man. Uh, do we have a question we want to ask Cora <laughs> before we leave? Hmm. So what do we talk about today? We talk mostly about stuff. eating, eating, eating humans and pizza humans. If you, if you could eat a human, what would be, what would be your favorite topping? What would be your favorite topping? Mm. On a human? Should we ask a sauce? Slather me in pizza sauce. If, what? what? Would, <laughs> would you eat me then? Yeah, I think it's got to be a sauce. Like, I think if Fair. it's like topping, it's too wide. I think okay. it's like what sauce goes best with eating human. Oh, that's a really good one. I like that a lot. Sure. Oh, so I've I, so I've heard that like human meat. I've read that human meat tastes like game, like a type of um, Pig, like it's close right? to guinea fowl. Um, really? I've never had guinea fowl, but if it has a strongish flavor, and I've had duck before, so maybe like like a ho like a hoisin sauce, maybe Ooh. or um, you know something with like a bit of like tart but a bit of sweetness. Yeah, maybe some like Worcester sauce. That that might be kind of cool. I think you can slap barbecue on anything. <laughs> and that's something I've always been saying. Yeah, it's kind of like the, they call yeah. it the long Not, like, pig. The, Nan the Nando's garlic chili, uh, I think that works well or stuff. I don't know whether you guys have ever had it, whether it's available in the States, but I think that's like a good kind of universal sauce to have with a lot of your meat. Garlic chili, I've, I've definitely had that on something. That's like the red sauce. It's a, it's a red tangy mm. sauce. Is that what you're talking about? 
Um, yeah, I'm it's surprised. kind of like it's a kind of like it's a peri peri sauce. I'm surprised to hear you say that it's like guinea fowl because everything I've heard is that human meat is like pig. I've also heard this because humans pretty much have a very similar skin to pigs. And uh, I mean, like, I've never, I've never, re- I, I don't know what it tastes like. I just, sure. I just read it. Um, I yeah, I just, I just sort of you read don't know it, what like, humans taste like. Younger. You, you you don't know. <laughs> You've never had it. No. <laughs> Jeremy no. shocking no. the guest to silence. <laughs> With his no holds barred <laughs> journalism, <laughs> I'm preparing for when we get Orson Scott Card on the show. Okay, well, I'm excited to read our answers on that. Thank you so much for listening yes. to the show, and of course, question everything. Bye.